Thanks, Mark. Dale Falwell is a successful financial consultant who has served four terms in the State House of Representatives. During that time, Dale introduced 29 bills which were passed and signed by the governor. He currently serves as Speaker Pro Tem of the House. He and his wife, Cynthia, live in Winston-Salem. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Let's go back in time. 1988, mm -hmm. uh, Republican Jim Gardner became our Lieutenant Governor. And Democrats immediately went into panic mode and stripped that office of its non a lot of its non-constitutional powers. Um, if elected, would you want to see those powers restored? Well, I think the Lieutenant Governorship has enough powers if, if the Lieutenant Governor is a verb and not a noun. And what I mean is most people in North Carolina don't even know who the lieutenant governor is because they haven't made an impact in their life. Uh, the lieutenant governor, anytime you define an elected job, you need to look at what the Constitution says. Presides over the Senate, which I have experience in doing that as Speaker Pro Tem. State Board of Education. Breaks ties. State Board of Education, I have an eight-year track record with, with the Salem Forsyth County Board of Education, Community College Board. And my point is, is that to, in order to fix North Carolina, which is necessary reforming state government the work really is not going to be through passing new laws it's going to be getting into the agencies of state government and there's only one candidate who's uniquely qualified who has the track record and the conservative experience of fixing things uh, that's running for this position. There's been a lot of debate, as you know, over uh, Governor Purdue's uh, temporary one cent sales tax which expired and was not renewed. Um, why not why not renew something like that? Why not put that back on in play uh, to keep from having to, f to lay off uh, even more public employees, especially teachers? Well, we have a government we can't afford. Uh, this has been the lost decade in North Carolina in terms of job growth, uh, the amount of debt that we've run up in unemployment insurance, and what's happened to public education. The fact is, is that North Carolina is not Hawaii. We are not an island. We ha but for 50 miles, we have as much border with other states as California does. And my point of telling you that, Jim, is that we have to be the low-cost place to live and do business. I was speaking in Mount Airy the other day and went up to Canaan, Virginia, 100 feet over the county state line. Right. 16 cars in line buying fuel, all with North Carolina tax. To the state to the west of us, Tennessee, doesn't even have an income tax, and they're getting ready to cut their sales tax again. My point of telling you this, and for your listeners, is until we get our tax structure right, and get the size of government correct, we're not going to be able to put people back to work. And the number one employer in 18 counties of North Carolina this afternoon is the unemployment check. That's staggering. Uh, let, me, let me switch gears for just a second, although it has something to do with the economy. If we always seem to be facing budget crises, and if until we get to the point where we can fix the structure, and I know where you're coming from, why not support casino gambling, the real kind, you know, real physical gambling places, casino gambling throughout the state as a way to raise revenue? Well, I guess my answer to that is basically, if you have to look at my voting record, I've always voted against that because I like calling North Carolina home. I don't think North Carolina should be a place of casino gambling. I don't think North Carolina should be a place of toll roads. I don't think North Carolina should be a place where, uh, you know, we have such high unemployment and, and a high percentage of people who are uneducated. There was a song back in the 80s called, I Like Calling North Carolina Home. Right, I remember. When I think of that song, that image is not what we're seeing in North Carolina right now. What about uh, industry incentives? Uh, and I was telling this to some of the other candidates. They almost never create actually new jobs. They, they, they seem to shift jobs from this state to that state. Would you be in favor of trying to revamp that whole system, how we give incentives? I have consistently, as a conservative, voted against every economic incentive. As, I'll ask you the one question. When's the last time you saw a ribbon cutting for a company that's been here for decades, doing their job, paying their business, Never. paying their employees, and paying their taxes? Never. Never. Why is that? Why can't we do ribbon cuttings for companies that have been here for a long time who are doing the right thing instead of giving money to the people who want to be here shortly? I want to give you the last 30 seconds or so. Why are you the best guy to run? You've already touched on this a little bit, but why do you think you'd be the best lieutenant governor? Because I'm the most consistent conservative, number one. Number two, there's not going to be any on-the-job training with me. I'll be able to hit the ground running. And number three, I got here with my hands and my stomach and my heart and my mind. And using my hand, stomach, heart, and mind are going to be the things necessary to fix our state government. All right, the website, www.dalefarwell.com, and you can find out more information about this gentleman. And thank you once again for being on Try Today. Thank you for having me.